Okay. This one is correct because uh, I figured it out. Uh, and uh, another thing is like uh, you feel yourself super comfortable. It's, a, it's our happy space. So it's our home. If you need to get out, come back, uh, please do. If you need just go out, uh, don't need to explain and uh, go and everything is fine. Uh, if you need to go grab yourself uh, food, water, whatever, also everything is fine. We are all at home. Uh, if you wanna, of course, this is event, it's not only for us to talk. If you wanna speak, um, or rather raise your hand or just start talking right away because sometimes we don't see it. it's a lot of windows open and we sometimes can miss if someone raises this uh, tiny hand um, thingy. Uh, so what else? So this is for you if you are interested in learning and development, if you new to learning and development, if you are an expert for everyone, it's super inclusive environment. If you just uh, the, for the first time in your life heard about this topic and you want to know more. So for pretty much uh, everyone who is passionate about learning and development. And um, uh, I came back. Uh, what do we expect out of this event? Uh, of course, we want to bring in some challenges and we want to brainstorm on solutions, but we know that we will not come out with uh, full solutions for all the problems in the world. So we want to get inspired. We want to exchange uh, ideas. We want to have uh, a little bit of networking. And of course, we want to have fun. So if you have some jokes to bring in, uh, please do it. I'm not so good in joking when I also have to moderate something, but I will try my best. Um, yeah, so, and um, please, you, some of you already wrote where you are. Uh, if you can pre introduce yourself in the chat, just write your name, uh, tell it a little bit uh, where you're from, uh, what your work currently uh, is, and uh, what your interest, uh, interests are, would be great. So we can have a little bit uh, uh, insights about ourselves. And while I, you are writing about yourself, I want to introduce myself. I think it's about time, right? After 10 minutes of presentation, uh, I would like to introduce myself. I am Olga. I'm originally from Ukraine. This is why I have this uh, uh, accent and uh, <laughs> my passion and profession in software engineering. And I've been deeply engaged with e-learning for the past seven years. I co-founded an educational studio in Ukraine and I am also a co-founder of an educational technology startup in Berlin, where we developed a learning management system for companies. You can know more uh, on my website or on the Workademy website. And speaking of Workademy, we have a page on LinkedIn. I would really, really appreciate if you uh, follow us. There we share some news about our product, about EdTech in general, and of course, updates on these events. These are our main events. We run them monthly and we gather this uh, tiny, nice community of learning and development uh, people and talk about some challenges. Uh, and um, our topic for today, would be around teams that care about uh, learning. Should they care? Should they not care? Why should they care? Is it possible for them to care about it? And what do we get from it? And finally, I will introduce uh, Chris, who will introduce the topic because Chris is the founder of uh, Inential, where they um, know some secrets about uh, making teams care about learning. So Chris will share his insights and findings and introduce the topic and bootstrap the um, discussion. So now I pass the stage to Chris and Chris, that's your turn to talk. Perfect, thank you, thank you, Olga. Um, and hello everyone. Uh, so I will not hijack the discussion. I will just uh, basically introduce also myself a little bit, uh, talk about uh, our experience very briefly, and then later we can jump into uh, more of a 
conversation like uh, uh, discussion um, and see what are your experiences and also I uh, will share my our, my own experiences. Uh, so actually, uh, similar to Olga, I actually have a, a software engineering background, and I was a software engineer uh, like let's say six years ago, and then jumped into the topic of uh, of education. Um, Co-founded Inential, uh, so now I'm C, uh, CEO at Inential as well, um, and um, yeah, really passionate about continuous and education. I'm constantly into this topic uh, and looking into how to help teams actually. And be more engaged in this area. How to help them develop? This is also coming from the software background. Uh, obviously, in especially there, uh, teams constantly need to uh, improve and constantly need to learn. So, um, this was kind of the the, the initial inspiration. And um, yeah, so initial very briefly uh, uh, about us. So you probably have used. Uh, Udemy or, or LinkedIn Learning, or you know at least the platform. So Inential basically um, aggregates, so combines all of these different platforms in one. Um, so you can access uh, uh, content from Udemy, from Blink is from Pluralsight and many, many others um, in one uh, with one account. And uh, we personalize it. So we help uh, to uh, structure this content. And um, actually, um, why um, I think uh, we have some uh, something to say here and, and some experience because we've been working with several uh, companies, uh, um, yeah, more than more than ten right now, helping them actually implement strategies and implement uh, solutions on how to make uh, their teams uh, to care about learning, find out why they should do it, um, and uh, happy to. Uh, yeah, bootstrap this discussion now. Uh, so Olga, if you can go to the next uh, uh, slide, we can uh, get slowly started. <laughs> so the first uh, point is, yeah, should teams really care about learning, right? So this is really like a question really number one uh, that we should really establish here. And actually why, what's the benefit? What is the benefit for, for teams, for business? And maybe here, so that I also don't hijack, um, we can, you can write in the chat or you can you know, raise your hand and uh, maybe you have some ideas yourselves um, what and, and why and yes or no should be the reason uh, for the teams to, to care. Um, so let's maybe start with, with that. I have chat open and if you guys have uh, want to raise your hand, feel free uh, to, to do it. Otherwise, I have a couple of ideas as well here. I say that the teams uh, should care, but uh, they have a head, have to have a good reason why. Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And what could be what could be the reasons why? In in a, in a when thinking about a, a team itself, because it's obviously there is individual um, um, reasons why, and then also there can be more team. Uh, level reasons why uh, obviously individually I think people uh, you know they look at uh, you know the personal development growth uh, they want to uh, progress in their careers right they uh, they get motivated um, in, in 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 the topics uh, but on the team level right like this is this is a little bit a little bit different uh, uh, here um, yeah it, it, it... I think for the team level, for each of the people caring about uh, learning as a team, first of all, they, sh they should care about the team itself and why uh, do they do that? Uh, like uh, how the dynamics of the team can impact uh, the each individual people, person willingness to learn. Uh, should, should it be a team leader or a manager who does that or should it be somehow uh, 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 company culture things or what what should it be mm -hmm. um, oh, i see also mm -hmm. yeah go ahead sorry go ahead oh sorry hi um i'm dwight i'm in cologne um and i am pretty much an lnd generalist and um, I didn't write my <laughs> my information in the chat, but um, yes, uh, I'm I, I'm 
often in Berlin as well, but um, in, in rainy and gray Cologne. Uh, I really think that uh, what's uh, important for teams is this idea of um, knowledge transfer or knowledge exchange. And um, for a team to be able to do that, uh, probably there has to be some core aspect, which is learning. So whether it be learning how to properly transfer knowledge within the team or so on. Um, yeah, so yeah, I think this idea of knowledge transfer within a team is, is key um, when you think about how we should approach learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. That's a, that's a, that's a very, good, uh, very good point here. And then we're having some more, um, more topics here so from maria um so getting more results uh, in less time growing uh yeah improving uh, quantitatively and qualitatively so getting gaining more insights and, and ideas also magdalena uh, about uh, yeah, challenges uh, with let's say uh, hybrid work engagement motivation communication collaboration um could be another uh, big areas uh, which yeah as uh, you also mentioned it it, co it contributes right to to knowledge transfer uh, in, in, in the end. Someone wanted to say something I've heard, I've heard that. Uh... Um, it was from me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Georgiana. Um, I was just thinking also about the, basically because the individual learning and the team learning could be connected somehow, they always uh, stand in together. So basically if you approach learning as a whole team, it can create this feeling of transparency and to seeing, what other people are thinking and learning and how they can align. So basically there's also transparency and alignment is possible into um, team goals or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially on, on, on that team goal side, uh, how they can uh, work together towards uh, something and, and, and develop together. Um, yeah, there we also have the topic of, uh, and now I can, I'm reading also the last message here. Uh, so um, yeah, basically bringing new perspective to learn and grow together, uh, propose better engagement opportunities and expand the knowledge uh, base of the team or business as a, as a whole. So I think uh, this is this is established. So I think no one said no uh, on the should teams care about uh, learning. So I think we're, we have that, that established uh, here. Um, let's uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, Olga, we can then um, talk about if actually teams care about the topic. Um, this is also related, obviously, to let's say their engagement into into learning. Um, and I will basically briefly, uh, very briefly, talk about our experiences. We've been, as, as I mentioned, within Nenshul, we've been implementing uh, um, learning strategies also with our customers. And uh, we've seen th those uh, results uh, through also numbers. Um, I'm not going to go into numbers. Uh, and if you guys want to uh, dive deeper into those topics uh, with me uh, later ask or, or so, feel free to connect on LinkedIn. And uh, I'm happy to talk uh, more, uh, more in depth. Um, and then, uh, so let me quickly uh, talk about uh, the, the experience we've had. So when always starting with uh, with companies, we've seen, so for example, they were using already solutions like Udemy or they had learning initiatives implemented uh, directly with them. Some even had, let's say, this kind of personal development plans in, in place. Um, but we've seen that there is initial excitement about those uh, initiatives. So starting off with, um, let's say, uh, uh, yeah, it could be a learning platform, could be any kind of initiative. And this initiative slowly uh, fade away unless there are certain criteria that um, that happen. Um, yeah, here basically what we've seen is that uh, people in the in the end they might not know um, what to learn next. So even if those initiatives are in place, they get a library like uh, like let's say platform like Udemy or LMS or or any kind of initiatives. The, the ideas basically slowly die down and they don't know what to focus on next. And this is also uh, the case because a lot of people, even though um, individually they might be motivated to, to grow, we've seen, and this is through actually research, that a lot of people over 50% don't necessarily know what to focus on exactly. They might have some ideas, they might know the direction they want to go, to, go into, but they don't know how and they don't know um, why to do it? So if they, uh, if we, we've seen that if they receive basically a, 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 a let's say, a access to a platform, they might not be able, to, don't, they might not not know what to, what to do. Uh, 
next thing is everyone is too busy. Uh, so this is uh, actually the, this is just just not necessarily the, the the reason. This is actually the the the, the outcome of a problem. Um, they're too busy because there is no prioritization in terms of um, uh, learning. And um, someone mentioned that uh, whether this was in chat or on uh, uh, when discussing is that um, basically uh, yeah team. Team alignment. Um, uh, yeah, this was. I think uh, Georgiana, it was you. So basically, this team alignment is is the topic that that might be relevant here, in terms of uh, um, yeah, why people think they are not uh, uh, they are too busy. So there is no no specific goal in place towards uh, learning. And then last step, which we see, is that there is no support from team leads, managers. So the 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 management. Um, they are not necessarily um, supporting the team, so they say, "Okay, there you go. You know, we've set up those initiatives. Um, you know, everyone is happy. You know, we should uh, now we just uh, you know leave it alone." Uh, that's that's to be honest, one number one reason why uh, things uh, don't uh, work out from from our experience, obviously. Um, and uh, we've seen that that this is this is one of the main main issues. Um, Okay, if you can go to the next slide, um, and this is, I'll just briefly talk about a solution that we've seen potentially works and the next step will be, of course, to discuss what's your experience, what are your solutions as well, um, and, and how we could uh, you know, combine it uh, together uh, into maybe some sort of uh, uh, solution outcome that is like a must have or, or something that, that we, we believe uh, uh, would work for, for everyone. So we see that there is kind of this, three step process so um clarity um focus and and support uh, those are of course like keywords but let me explain so uh, first thing is basically what we've seen is that it's important to help uh, teams uh, and not only individuals to understand better um what they need and what kind of needs they have it could be done by discussing it with the team leaders. We've been doing that um, also with, with, our, with our customers. We've been talking to the team leads, trying to understand better uh, what they need. Uh, we send out typically this kind of team needs survey at the beginning. It's literally a short survey to really understand if the team even knows what is actually uh, the, the topic that they need to focus on and then how they align this with, with, the, business, uh, with the business goals. So this is number one, and then also individually, because uh, as you as you some of you already mentioned, um, in the individual um, the individual people also have their own agenda and in and they, their own needs. So this needs to be uh, in a way uh, aligned. Um, then it's the focus. So it's basically yeah personalization and structure. So as I mentioned, we need to understand the needs and then basically. Uh, providing them personalization so uh, in a way and personalization not meaning only for individuals so it's not personalization like okay there's this person for for them but also for the team so what they need and then basically finding them those right solutions uh, this could be in some cases a team might let's say look for a training uh, a workshop uh, they might need coaching they might need um, uh, let's say online course or on any different types of uh, resources that can be provided there. Also, um, as uh, Dwight, you rightfully mentioned, you know, not for knowledge transfer. And um, how do you basically manage that uh, between uh, uh, between team members? Maybe there is also someone from the team who can actually um, uh, contribute to to peer learning rather than using an online course. Maybe this knowledge is already there, right? Um, and we've seen also structure is is helping. So uh, doing one thing at the time. So if we basically, we've noticed that if we, uh, and this was actually uh, happen, happened uh, uh, with, uh, with one of our customers where the, the manager has assigned to every person, I think 10 learning paths. And they were wondering like, okay, so why is no one doing anything? And obviously everyone was overwhelmed. Like, what should I start with? Like, what, what do I even do, right? So, so this is like, obviously, you know, it might be a, a such an obvious thing, but but it's super important that uh, it's it's one thing at a time, not not too many. Um, and then building the, those this culture of, of learning among teams, um, which is obviously not a simple process, not a simple thing. Uh, it's easy to say, um, but it, it's basically about um, um, having that buy-in from the managers, from the team leaders, 
um, it's important, super important that they are on board with with the with the strategy that 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 is set up for for learning, and and uh, they can also contribute uh, or like convey that uh, to the team. So so discuss with the teams uh, what they need and and so on. Um, we can go to the to the next slide, uh, Olga. So now this was the um, the kind of uh, Bootstrap of the discussion, um, and we can uh, jump into some um, uh, of your experiences, um, what you've seen um, in your companies, in 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 your when working with your uh, with your teams. Um, how did it work? What's your experience? Um, do you typically see, for example, that the teams uh, care? Is it the same as I have seen? So that it slowly, let's say, dies down over time. If if it's not kind of maintained or or or, or supported, uh, what's your experience here? And then we will jump into into the solution. Um, so, what uh, kind of solutions we might we might have here? Uh, Lynn uh, raised hand. Uh, Lynn, you can yeah. introduce yourself. Yeah. I... Hi. Um, yeah. So I. Um... I have been basically responsible for trying to build in a learning and development kind of strategy into our team. We were originally 23 people and now we're 170. So it's quite a big boom. And we haven't really had anything official in place. So I've been kind of trying to wing it. And I think the hardest thing is, in my experience, is like trying to find a balance from bottom up and top down, because obviously you need to have the the buy-in from management and leadership and that's obviously hard if some of them have stuck in their ways and they know how everything's running for a long time and you're trying to shift things around so you need to have their support and then from the bottom up like to actually have people be able to kind of make their claims that they want to have this and actually to try and carve out time and I think time has been the biggest problem like I've run sort of short courses that I try to make incredibly digestible with like 15 minute exercises every once a week with a specific like slack channel where everything lived but um, maybe two people were engaged and then it just fizzles out and then I get demotivated and so I think it's a I think yeah having something accessible but like yeah, how to get everybody on board. And I think that's my, my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is indeed uh, something that, uh, that's uh, quite uh, difficult, especially to get that behind from bo both sides if you're starting off from like, uh, from scratch, right? That's, uh, uh, that's pretty tricky. But yeah, so what, what do you guys think? What, uh, what would be, uh, uh, so I don't obviously only talk about what are, what would be the solutions here? Uh, mm -hmm. Magda, uh, I, I see that you have high, raised your hand, yeah. Yeah, so just uh, um, listening to you and people who already said something, it's all very interesting and uh, to hear what's happening on the other side, because I work for an institute that basically offers those programs yes so i have the other side of the view and something that i've already observed and you're confirming that a little bit by what you say is that why is so important and what lean just mentioned like you are there because i end up then with those teams <laughs> and i think the most um the biggest part that is missing sometimes first of all is for the teams individuals to understand why they are there because sometimes companies or HR or you know anyone who decides to sign up the team for example for a program they just expect the team okay of course you need it look <laughs> this is the goal and then they come and they expect uh, but the expectations are very individual with Georgi uh, Georgina Ranch. I think that's very important to balance that out and and um, something that I keep I keep uh, question how to blend learning I'm, I'm a fan of blended learning so 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 there, there is always this blended in terms of individual and group learning and online and in person and etc so so blended as much as it can be also because of time but as well as uh really in, in 
combining this individual with group learning. Uh, because I think there is a lot of happening where people feel like there is a support, what you've already mentioned, support from managers, of course, but also support within the group. So people feel like they are on the journey together and that, for example, they can share also challenges and problems and failures. And, uh, but but it's, it's something very complex. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, I think for me, always the first step is like, why? Because then people come and they say like, mm, I don't know, tell me. <laughs> so, and they expect you to tell them why they are there. Uh, so uh, yeah, this, this why for me, it's a, a very, very important thing. Yeah if really encouraging people to be engaged and motivated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly right. Like, I mean, the, the, the first uh, the first why, and also, as I mentioned, the, this is what we saw so the why um, for the teams, right? So uh, this individual why, uh, it's one thing, uh, then the, the team and the team lead kind of, uh, depending on your setup, of course, uh, team lead manager, project lead, whatever uh, the setup is, uh, it needs to have also certain certain um, understanding of why they actually need that. And uh, you, you mentioned very interesting, like um, there's this topic of, of like collaborative uh, learning and and basically uh, working together on, on, a, on a social. And this, we've seen this helps a lot. So when people don't necessarily only individually focus on a topic but when they focus in a in a in a, in a group setup this is uh, helping it doesn't always work this is also important to say it doesn't always work because the group setup it depends really what kind of group that is and how close they are together in if they how they're working together so it, it really depends on depends on, on on that a little bit yeah georgiana i see that you raise your hand go, go um ahead. Yeah, I was uh, thinking of like two situations that I had in mind with experiences with team learning when um, that I saw during the years uh, in being successful. Basically, one of them is when the manager or team lead is very into that. So basically, they create and design an environment in which people learn. So that's working. So it's but it's uh, team lead based. And the second one is need based, basically. You know, when people need to create some objectives, they lack some competences or skills or knowledge, so they're very motivated. And then the why is very obvious in that case. So basically in these two situations, I've seen it work. Other than that, like your previous slide, at some point sooner or later, um, something will happen in uh, the focus. You always compete to, with uh, time basically and with uh, the product that needs to be delivered or everything. So learning always competes with that from, from what, I, what I observed. That's it. <laughs> so, Georgiana, can I just ask you like in terms yeah. of the um, like management leadership that you said mm. that when they really like carve out and value learning for their team and that's how you see success. Like, on the ground like what does that actually look like like what are the actual sort of things mm -hmm. that they're doing in leadership that do that yeah. you can see that in their team processes for example if they use agile then uh, yeah, the way retrospective is done for example because i've seen teams that do retrospectives and they just they just complete the in every cycle they keep having the same aha moments and they don't don't do anything about it <laughs> then uh they do successful retrospectives. That's one uh, one thing. Or they have habits, or they have uh, one on ones the managers with the uh, with the, their teams, and they actually ask, or they have uh, this team discussions. Uh, you can see that in their uh, basically, if you see their team life and uh, the products, or like in meetings or discussions, you can see this approach of uh, of learning. I mean, these are just the first things that came to. Uh, to my mind right now for from your experience or anybody else uh here like uh, how much influence do you think that um like being a role model like actually carving out time for learning for yourself uh, makes an influence to the culture so i can maybe quickly answer to to, to this one unless someone else also has an, has an answer because on, on an example of, of actually a team lead who uh we think is like let's say a dirt uh, role model of uh, how uh, this uh, should work uh, in the teams obviously uh, it doesn't work always like that um, it's a it's a, actually also a friend of mine who is an engineering uh, manager and he really takes time and 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 this is this is really like I, on a daily basis to make sure that uh, everyone has the right uh, resources uh, for learning 
and he um, really takes care of that himself that he also is improving so I, I think to, to answer your question here Lina, uh, this is also for in his case at least um, he is being the kind of role model so he's he's uh, doing that uh, himself and then uh, providing this these resources uh, uh, helping the teams trying to understand uh, what's needed all the time uh, but like I said this is kind of a um, he has this mindset and and I know that not every uh, leader will have this mindset uh, from the get-go. Like it's uh, it's not I'm not possible even to convince some people unless I don't know how. You know this is uh, this is maybe the, the the case. I see Dwight. You also raise your raise raise your hand. So yeah, go, go ahead. Uh, yes, I just had a quick point to add. Um, in my organization, learning is a core uh, of what we do. Well, I work in knowledge management, so I would hope so. <laughs> uh, but uh, in terms of the way my uh, boss. Uh, um, uh, deals with uh, with learning and um, team learning. It's very very transparent. So from uh, we meet weekly, and we do we meet twice a week, but we have a big uh, group call, and we actually discuss what our learning goals are for the week, what our learning goals are for the month, and so on. And that's something that um, my boss also participates in. So it's really really transparent what um, what she's doing and what we are all doing. So it's we're all on the same page and there are times where we might actually say, hey, that's awesome. Maybe we can align on that and then we can, you know, somehow do a knowledge exchange over another call with a colleague or something like that. So I think in this setting, it's very, very open. It's very, very transparent. And it then encourages um, from the beginning this uh, exchange. And it also creates this momentum, I think, um, where you don't really feel that you are learning in a vacuum. You're learning by yourself, because when we think about learning, we also you know, it, we think about this conventional sense of we're all in the same room at the same time, and but now it's just all learning at home fully online. And so that can create this vacuum effect as well. So I think having a team come back together and align on these goals, whether they be individually or just a team goal, is a really, really good way of, of kind of ensuring that, you know, it is transparent and everybody's in the same uh, boat, as it were. Here, maybe one more question to that, uh, Dwight. Uh, is it the case that uh, your teams also, the, like let's say the manager, the team uh, itself also uh, gathers, let's say on a weekly basis uh, or, or every uh, like twice a week and, and talks about those those learning goals or is it only in, in this kind of uh, higher level between managers, team leaders meeting that, that you discuss it? This this happens within the team, so with with all um, levels. So um, I, there are the the board from the board level. Also, learning is a core point of, uh, part of our organization. So it's something that comes up, and we do have directors that come all the way down. But even just in the the, the core team um, sense, um, everyone has um, their their transparent learning goals, and it's something that at times you can actually view um, what how somebody is learning and where their track is um so it's very very um open in that sense mm -hmm. yeah perfect perfect that sounds so, can i ask you do i do yep. you like track then like the successes and like the progress that you've made in these learnings can you look back and like see who's learned what or what the team has learned in previous uh Absolutely. So on the individual level, um, you you know, we use um, Lattice, we use the Lattice system, which um, gives us a lot of um, just personal goals, developmental goals. And that's where you can track that and, um, you know, create different um, systems of rating a progression. Um, and then uh, on the team level, it's something that we track just really um, at times in OneNote. Um, we have our teamly, uh, our weekly meetings in OneNote. And so there's always a point and everyone fills in what their priorities are for the week and what their learning priorities are um, and how that is progressing. Um, you know, simply, it doesn't have to be a new way of doing it. I simply write, you know, I'm, I'm now learning PowerPoint and Empower. And, you know, my learn, personal learning journey is going through LinkedIn um, for like an 11 hour, 11 hour PowerPoint course. I put that into my, um, to the, the OneNote and, you know, weekly we discuss how is that that going you know so it can just be on this base level and it really is more about having this open communication within the, the team um and yes of course trying to track that but really just being transparent and and and, and supporting each other through whatever you know you personally are trying to learn i like that uh, transparency and support uh, uh, magda you raised your hand sorry i just had one more 
question. Dwight, you are there on the spot now. So <laughs> many questions to you. No. <laughs> but you know, gave us a successful, you know, approach how to do this. Uh, so I'm just wondering, you mentioned set a goal, uh, goal settings uh, and it's great. Yeah, totally. I can imagine that working. I'm just wow. wondering, how do you set those goals? Is it, for example, you finish the course or you implemented the knowledge or um, yeah, we'd love yeah, to know so how do you set the goals there? So um, we have the ability to actually set our own goals or build a learning path for ourselves. So from, and I can give you the example again of PowerPoint. Um, mm -hmm. My idea is that I want to learn PowerPoint. I want to be able to use PowerPoint creatively. I want to then able um, to use PowerPoint in presentations and I want to be proficient at presenting in PowerPoint. But I'm approaching mm -hmm. that from learning the basics of PowerPoint all the mm -hmm. way up. And then the practice would be in the end, um, or the, the outcome would be that I can, you know, stand in front of a crowd and present in PowerPoint using mm -hmm. presenter mode. And I would have built that presentation mm -hmm. myself. But each of then the um, touch points for me, uh, for instance, you know, finishing this LinkedIn course and practice, 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 mm -hmm. um, reading the Empower Manual, practice, practice, practice. So these are individual things that I've set for myself. Um, and with the guide, you know, with my manager um, and my team in mind and so on. And I've also reached out to team members who are um, experts in PowerPoint. And then in one of the touch points, setting up a um, sit down training for two hours or something like that. So it's more of this, in my specific case, building my own um, learning journey. From the management perspective or the management side there, you're often given, um, you know, a, a deadline for a for learning goal. So my boss would say you have um, nine months to complete this, it, you know, with PowerPoint is always that you have to constantly learn and constantly develop, but to be able to get to the point where I can build my own presentation and present, that is the, the department goal. And that fits into the, the, the department missions as well. So it's not just necessarily I'm now a great presentation with PowerPoint. It's like, how is that going to help the, the mm -hmm. team and the department going forward? So perhaps I didn't answer your question, but I hope I did. <laughs> yes, you did. Thank <laughs> you. Great. Giving an example is always the best way. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Lynn? Oh, yeah, just, um, just quickly for anybody out there and Dwight as well with your success story. But um, uh, I think the problem that I have found a lot in my experience is uh, carving out that time for learning. Um, I understand that when it fits into the company goals, maybe you can claim uh, claim that time a little bit more sort of with more validity. But um, is this something that that you guys have experienced that fits into your working hours or people expected to learn outside their working hours on top of things and it's sort of like a, an, a benefit of working with that company that you have these resources given to you. So I can quickly answer on, on what I what we've what we've experienced and what we've seen is that um, and as this is crystal clear transparent like how what are the expectations I think then people will also have tr trouble uh, defining what when should they be learning. Is it like then they start questioning like okay should I be doing it? Is it okay if I do it uh, during my working time or is it or should I actually take it home? Uh, and I, this is like I think one of the main um, topics that we also discuss with with companies we work with that they need to define this at, at first. Um, because later on, the people just they just they just don't know and they just don't do it at all. Um, so this is um, if you, even if you do if you say okay, this is for you know you have these resources, you have this budget, uh, use it for you know your free time. Um, even if you say that, I think there is going to be uh, I mean we've seen that it's going to be much more um, engagement into into learning than than if, if not saying anything. Um, but of course, uh, to actually find this time, and there are a couple of techniques um, that people are are trying to to establish. Like, for example, setting this uh, special uh, learning time. So, for example, in our company, we have uh, this set up uh, on Fridays uh, afternoon. You everyone can schedule, let's say, two hours for for learning, and uh, they can spend that uh, that time. Uh, it doesn't always happen, and primarily because of deadlines, um, it's other type of you know stuff that is happening there, um, but this is also from uh, the manager 
team leader um, that uh, they need to make sure that this is this is happening um, because individually people will um, likely unless this is something that they really care about when they are uh, when they're learning and they maybe like do I said uh, they have it set for their for their goals and this is like a they need to do it and they likely uh, will probably drift drift away at least that's what I've I, what I've seen. Um, maybe you guys have some other experiences. I they see Ruta, you've raised your hand. Yes, thank you. It was good to, to listening to all of you. And what I have noticed is that actually it depends on the fact whether our learners can take ownership of their learning. Because I'm working in, uh, in the company, in a FinTech company where uh, L&D initiatives are very new. And uh, there, there is very little ownership coming from people and uh, they want to learn, but first of all, they don't really know what they want to learn. So what we have done, we have done a training needs analysis on the company level, and we have identified that we are going to develop the leadership skills, which is very important at the moment, and then the soft skills and incorporate people from different teams. And actually what uh, Magdalena said also worked very well for us is offering blended learning opportunities. So something that they have to do themselves as a prep before that. And uh, we try to communicate as clearly as possible that this prep is going to be done outside of your working hours. But then the training sessions uh, that are facilitated online are done during your working hours. So the expectation is more or less three hours per week. And then depending on the week, it could be a little bit more, a little bit less. And so far it has been uh, very successful. The only thing that I am a little bit worried about is what happens when our so-called academies are gonna be over because the two testing groups are reaching the end at the moment. Their learning journeys of uh, three to four months are coming to the end. And then how can we um, successfully continue that and keep their eagerness to learn? Because at the very beginning, their contribution and engagement wasn't that high, absolutely not. But uh, uh, resonating to what was said by you before is that the more uh, involvement there is from different people and sharing stories, applying the knowledge that we learn to our work cases, this really helped uh, uh, to strengthen the engagement to, to make it grow. And uh, now we see that less and less uh, uh, reminders are needed from the L&D part uh, to, to complete uh, the self-learning uh, goals. And uh, speaking about the dedicated time, yes, we are um, actually doing that or trying to do that for our newbies. So whoever is in the onboarding system, they have a plan and they are asked to dedicate the first two hours of their working day for completing the onboarding course. And it works quite well because they don't have these deadlines and they, their like time constraints for them are not that harsh. Mm -hmm. But how to do that for people who are really working on very hard uh, deadlines or maybe the teams are losing uh, some members because they're leaving or we are growing and we need uh, some more people to cover that. It's still a very big challenge for me. Maybe I can also uh, quickly add here is that uh, maybe this also expectations uh, in terms of uh, uh, the learning time spent by the teams, uh, at least uh, let's say continuous learning time uh, might not be necessary. So I think this is what we've seen is that sometimes, you know, teams learn for three months because they exactly have this kind of challenge, they, their goal and they need to do something. Then there is a break because they, I don't know, uh, project that they need to deliver and then everyone is their heads are not in about you know learning uh, a new topic but uh, rather uh, delivering and this is also kind of uh, maybe Dwight mentioned about practice like it's uh, also you cannot only be let's say non-stop getting new knowledge you also need to use it in the in the work setup um, so that's uh, something that uh, that uh, we've seen goes in cycles um, but of course they like those kind of goals, I guess uh, here, uh, Ruta, as you said, um, uh, you're basically just to kind of understand. So you, because you, you, you said that um, you're setting up this kind of goals also in individual level, or is this more of a let's say a team kind of goal where they need to uh, work on a specific uh, topic? 
No, we set it on the individual level for people who are being recruited for, for those groups. So let's mm -hmm. say if you are learning about resilience as, the, as a part of the soft skills, uh, then you have the specific learning goals uh, that we uh, make before the start of the learning journey together. And then we monitor in between the, the learning journey and at the very end to see that. But uh, team learning goals, they do not really work because um, the managers, they don't take the ownership of learning. So that is very clear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's actually the issue. Uh, uh, I think we all see uh, here. Um, yeah, okay. And uh, in this individual goal, so is it only for for the newcomers, or is it do you, do you also try also continue with uh, with after they they start? Uh, it's both. So there are like uh, two separate things. The onboarding, uh, which has uh, the specific time set for learning, which is in the morning, uh, up to two hours. And then whatever is um, related to soft skills or to leadership skills that we are building at the moment. Uh, so yes, uh, there we have uh, only a time set for practicing sessions that we have either with uh, the facilitators outside or we do it also with our internal people. And uh, for the rest, uh, they can spare the time themselves. Uh, but we set the learning goals as well at the beginning of the learning journey. Uh, and then we monitor in the middle and at the end. And um, this is also, I was always uh, curious about uh, kind of time constraint in terms of those goals, because I guess uh, also in case of uh, Yuruta Dwight as well, you guys were doing, uh, you're doing this kind of, uh, the goals are there. Is it always said, okay, three months you need to be done with this kind of curriculum, plus maybe there's a workshop uh, that's part of it and uh, some other, um, you know, blended initiatives here. I would say that our goals are more related to behavioral change. Mm -hmm. That okay. probably it has nothing to do with, with PowerPoint or some, some kind of a technical uh, program that you would like to learn. So maybe you would like to become more people-oriented manager, or you would like to uh, be more resilient to different uh, challenges that we're facing in a hybrid working environment. So this is more of a behavioral change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have time. It, it's it's very hard to put time on changing some behavior because it's uh, uh, constantly changing during your life. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah, but uh, there are definitely some learnings that uh, have to have uh, like goals that have some time uh, set, right? Uh, that have to be measurable, achievable, and uh, uh, have some time frame. Otherwise. Yeah, so for example, like hard skills like PowerPoint, I would say that can be somehow like in one week, I want to be able to do some animation uh, so I can create for the company this presentation that will win a new customer or whatever, like aligning the goals. Oh, uh, that's a very nice discussion. And we have nine minutes left. And uh, what should we do during these nine minutes? Uh, we have this uh, next slide, Chris, with the uh, solutions, but I think that we actually combined both. Yeah, yeah, we talked, I think, uh, about uh, both. Uh, I should have put it all on the same slides. <laughs> yeah, is, but, uh, but what I would like is that, so it was almost one hour of discussions where some people were talking about some challenges, uh, other people were answering, hey, we overcome this with this. And then it was a very nice interchange. I would like all of you to write or to speak, like what would be the first thing uh, you would do differently or apply after this conversation? Uh, you can do both, uh, rather speak or write. Uh, if uh, there was some insight that you definitely would apply, not immediately, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> I think um, I really like the idea of um, <clears throat> of these learning goals in the stand-ups that Dwight, you have like, I think that's something I'd really like to propose to our management teams to, to take on. Um, I 
second that as a, um, I'm currently uh, working at this smaller company and then we are developing right now the all the performance, the development, the, the everything. <laughs> so basically um, we have these two ideas like the you have the performance goals and then you have the learning goals and basically I would take like where to implement them in processes or in stand up or um, so I think this uh, um, everything that I've heard today was very useful for what I'm going to have to do in the in the future so thank you for for organizing the space and create this nice discussion good luck good luck everyone for in implementing this uh, it's challenging thing, but uh, it's definitely uh, some things are doable, and uh, it's good that we can contribute to to that. Yeah, that's definitely about the leaders. When you were talking, I remember like times when I was able to implement this learning Friday one per month. I had uh, uh, buy-in from managers, from the teams. Teams were super eager to learn. But then every Friday, there was some releases that were broken and the, the team would just work on that and <laughs> nothing helped. So yeah, that's uh, super important. Um, Okay, thank you so much. I think that we can wrap it up. Uh, Chris and myself, we have some gifts or I don't know how to call it uh, because uh, you were with us during this hour. So we, um, ah, okay. I forgot about <laughs> this slide during our brainstorming. So imagine that it was there all the time and uh, what we have to offer you. So right now at Workademy, we are testing the mix of different uh, interactive formats, and we would like to test them on some real cases. So if you want to uh, be involve us in your challenges, you can give us a piece of content, maybe some PDF or PowerPoint, and we can uh, provide the concept how we would see it as a, in, an interactive uh, thing. Uh, this is uh, from my side, and Chris also has something to offer you. They offer for one team of your choice, they would analyze the needs and create a personalized learning path. And uh, uh, I will send you email afterwards. So if you are not uh, very fast on scanning QR codes or copying the links, uh, you will get them in the follow-up email. So that's fine. And uh, yeah, it was us, me, Olga, and Chris uh, from Inential. And uh, we, were, we were happy to spend these uh, minutes and uh, with you. And uh, we have still four minutes left for any question or any feedback, any insight, please uh, shoot. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been really, uh, it, I also quite like the group. It's been really <laughs> valuable to actually be able to almost have a conversation with everybody and hear everybody's really like hands-on insights. So thank you so much for organizing and for the, pushing the invitation to me, Olga. I really appreciate that. And I wish you were here with me in my frigging cold, massive office too. I'm very lonely here. <laughs> thank you, Olga. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. I was here from the beginning. I took a break in between, but I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming and to, to make this discussion a discussion. That's great. Yeah, thank you very much. It was great. And I guess next time we go to Lean's office. office. Yes, yes. <laughs> She's like calling us. Yeah, so. that is a very massive office. <laughs> <laughs> we could keep distance. Yeah. <laughs> A lot, like one meter, well, 100 <laughs> meter between each of us. It's huge. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. Have a good day, everyone. Ciao. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Chris. Thank you, so thank you everyone. Day. Thanks. Hola. Hi, guys. I'm here. Yeah. Uh.
yeah, I'm here. Hello. <laughs> uh, I will I... stop recording.